This is the SAT MathWiz tutoring service with a lesson on plugging in X and Y values into functions in order to set them up and to solve them. So let's go ahead and look at a problem from College Board's 2012-2013 practice test. Which of the following equations is satisfied by the five pairs of numbers listed in the table above? This is a problem where you might be able to take some context clues from the, cho from the choices that are shown, but at the end of the day, you're solving by plugging in. So if I take choice A and plug in, choice A says that we've got x to the third power plus 3. y equals x to the third power plus 3. So when I plug in x being negative 2, I should get y being negative 3. So let's try that negative 2 to the third power plus 3 is equal to negative 8 plus 3 which is negative 5. So we already know that A is not a viable choice because when we plugged in negative 2 for our X we did not get negative 3 for our Y. Notice that X is the independent variable it's the one you plug in and Y is the dependent variable or the output so when X is my input I should get whatever Y they're telling me for my output. So let's try B. B is y equals 3x plus 3. When I plug in negative 2, 3 times negative 2 plus 3, I should get negative 3 for my y. That's negative 6 plus 3, which is negative 3. So, so far, choice B is looking good. What about when I try 0 and 3? y equals 3x plus 3. That's 3 times 0 plus 3, which comes out to 3. So, so far, these two checked out. And I'm going to go straight down the list here, plugging in the other values to ensure. y equals 3 times 1 plus 3, which comes out to 6. y equals 3 times 2 plus 3, which is 6 plus 3, which is 9. Perfect and y equals 3 times 4 plus 3 which is 12 plus 3 which is 15 perfect so without having to go through all of the answer choices I already know that B is the function which would work out with this set of X and Y values here's a problem from College Board's 2012 practice test if the function f is defined by f of x equals 3x plus 4, then 2f of x plus 4 equals which of the following? One rule of thumb when it comes to functions, and I mentioned this on my video regarding crazy f of x's, is that handwriting is of the utmost importance. Especially on a problem where it's pretty confusing, you may not know where to start, just start by writing out what you have as your given information. f of x equals 3 x plus 4. Therefore, 2 of f of x plus 4, really what that means is that wherever I see an f of x, I have to plug in 3x plus 4. And the f of x is right here. So that's 2 times 3x plus 4 plus 4. And all I did is I plugged in 3x plus 4 as my x. That's my independent variable. Now, whatever I get for my answer is going to be my y, my output, or otherwise known as my dependent variable. 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times 4 is 8. Distributed the 2 there, plus 4. And all together, it comes out to 6x plus 12 after we combine our like terms. 6x plus 12. So the correct answer here would be choice E. Here's a problem from College Board's 2011 practice test. If x and y are positive integers, what are all the solutions of the equation 3x plus 2y equals 11? Okay, so they're giving us a handful of solutions. 1 comma 4, 3 comma 1, 2 comma 2, we already said 1 comma 4, we already said 3 comma 1, and so those are the only three unique solutions. So we need to figure out which of those solutions work. So, if I do 
1 comma 4. I'm going to take the function 3x plus 2y equals 11. I'm going to plug in, since this is in the format of x comma y, I'm going to plug in 1 for my x and 4 for my y. 3 times 1 plus 2 times 4 equals 11. That's 3 plus 8 equals 11. 11 equals 11, and that worked out. So 1 comma 4 is definitely one of the solutions. Now let's go ahead and try 3 comma 1. That's 3 times 3 plus 2 times 1 should equal 11. 3 times 3 is 9, 2 times 1 is 2, 9 plus 2 is 11, which equals 11, and it works out also. So 3 comma 1 is also one of the solutions. Last but not least, we're going to try 2 comma 2. So that's 3 times 2 plus 2 times 2 should equal 11. 3 times 2 is 6, 2 times 2 is 4. So we have 10 on the left and 11 on the right, and they do not match up. So we've got 3 comma 1 working out, 1 comma 4 working out, but 2 comma 2 not working out. So that means that the correct answer would be 3 comma 1 and 1 comma 4, which is choice D. Here's a problem from College Board's 2011 practice test. A company's profit in dollars for producing X machines in one day is given by that function. If the company produces 10 machines in one day, then according to this formula, what is the profit? Well, be careful not to think that that P stands for producing because they're telling you that P is the profit. The profit is 500 x minus 20 x squared and they're also telling us that x is the number of machines so 10 machines means that 10 goes in for our x right there and right there and everything else stays the same five hundred times ten minus twenty times ten squared ten squared is one hundred 500 times 10 is 5,000 and 20 times 100 is 2,000. 5,000 minus 2,000. Therefore, P equals 3,000. So our answer would be C. Here's a problem from College Board's 2011 practice test. Which of the following equations expresses y in terms of x for each of the four pairs of values shown in the table above? Once again, this is like the first problem we tried here. Our only real resort is to just plug in, plug in the x and y combinations for all of these and see which one fits. First, I'm going to take a look at the context clues. Which of these for four would give me 24. There's a very big space between 4 and 24. And when I plug in 1, I get 7.5. Well, actually, from that, from 1 and 7.5, you can see that choice D is working right off the bat. Let's see if it works for other combinations. So if I tried Y equals 7.5X, like I said, if X equals 1, then y equals 7.5. Let's try for 2 and 13.0. y equals 7.5x. So for 2, I should get 13.0. 7.5 times 2, which is 15. So it's not 13.0. So now we know that we can rule out choice D. Now, I know choice E is not going to work because for 1, we should get 7.5. And if I put a 1 in right here, that's 7.5 plus 5.5, which is not, which is going to be inevitably a number greater than 7.5. So I know that choice E won't work. Choice C. If X were to equal 1 there, 5.5 
times 1 plus 7.5. Why is supposed to come out to 7.5 and here it's coming out to 13, which is not going to work. And we're quickly just going through our answer choices until we find the one that works for us. 5.5x plus 2. That means that if I plugged in 1, I'd have 5.5 times 1 plus 2, which is 11 plus 2, which is 13. So, so far for the first combination, choice B is working. Let's try it for some of the others. Y equals 5.5x plus 2. So for 2, we should get an output of 13. 5.5 times 2 plus 2 equals 11 plus 2, which is 13. So choice B seems to be panning out. For 3, we should get 18.5. 5.5 times 3 plus 2. 16.5 plus 2, which is 18.5. So far, it seems to be working out for the first three choices. Why not quickly try the fourth one? Most students would tell me, wouldn't this take me too long to do on an actual SAT? And my answer is, it takes a lot longer to do it and talk about it at the same time like we're doing. But to quickly do this on your scrap page really does not take that long. And here the answer comes out to 24. So therefore, the correct choice is choice B. Here's a problem from College Board's 2011 practice test. The function f is defined as f of x equals 5x minus 2a. f of 10 plus f of 5 equals 55. When in doubt, do a little writing. Write what the given information is so that you can visually analyze it. f of 10 plus f of 5 equals 55. f of 10 is going to be 5 times 10 minus 2a. So basically wherever there was an x, I plugged in a 10. f of 5 is going to be 5 times 5 minus 2a. And they're telling us that that whole sentence equals 2a there. They're telling us that that whole sentence should equal 55. Right now we've only got one variable so it shouldn't be hard to solve. 5 times 10 is 50 minus 2a plus 25 minus 2a equals 55. 75 minus 4a equals 55. Take away 75 from both sides. Negative 4a equals negative 20. Divide by negative 4, a equals positive 5. Therefore, the answer is C. Here's a problem from College Board's 2007 practice test. Which of the following equations describes y in terms of x for all the ordered pairs in the table above? When we're trying these, I probably would want to plug in 0 and 100 for all three in order to rule out some of the easy ones that we can rule out. Um, because since it has a 0 in it, it might be a lot easier to work out. So, for, for choice A, it should be 100 minus 0 squared should give us 100, and it does. For choice B, 100 minus 0 should give us 100, and once again it does. Choice D also works out. And so far, all five choices seem to work for 0 and 100 when I quickly glance at them. So now, I would say 1 and 99 would be the next easiest one to do. 100 minus 1 squared should give us 99, and it does.
100 minus 1 gives us 99. Once again, 100 minus 2 times 1 doesn't give us 99 right here. It gives us 98. So we know that C does not work. 100 minus 4 times 1 gives us 96. So we know that since it's not 99, as it should be, D doesn't work. And for choice E, we have 100 minus 100 times 99, which I don't even need to test out. I know that that's not going to come out to 99. So E is not one of the choices. Now we're down to just A and B, and we can fill in the last set of numbers there. When I plug in 2 as my input, my, out my output should be 96. 100 minus 2 squared is 100 minus 4, which is 96. Now on choice B, if I plugged in 2, 100 minus 2 is 98, so I know that choice B doesn't work. Therefore, our best answer is choice A. Here's a problem from College Board's 2004 practice test. The table gives values of the function f for several values of t. If the graph of f is a line, which of the following defines f of t? So for which of these functions, when I plug in 0, do I get negative 1 and the rest of the choices? 0 minus 1 gives us negative 1. 0 plus 1 gives us positive 1, so that's not a choice. 2 times 0 plus 1 gives us positive 1, so that's not a choice. 2 times 0 minus 1 gives us negative 1, so that one does work. And 1 minus 2 times 0 gives us positive 1, so I know that that's not one of the choices. Now we're down to only choices A and D. So let's go over to the combination of 1 comma 1. So when I plug in 1, I should get 1, and here I get 0. But on choice D, when I plug in 1, that's equal to 2 minus 1, which is 1. So when I plug in 1 for x, I get 1 for my y. Therefore, choice D is the correct answer. Here's a question from College Board's 2004 practice test. Let the function f be defined as f of x equals 5x for all numbers x. Which of the following is equivalent to f of p plus r? f of p plus r is a fancy way of saying that in my function, wherever I see an x, I can just plug in p plus r. So let's go ahead and try that. First, we write out our function f of x equals 5x and f of p plus r is going to be 5 times p plus r. So f of p plus r means wherever I see an x, I put a p plus r. Now we're just going to simplify that. f of p plus r is 5 times p plus r, so I'm going to distribute the 5 to the p and the r. 5p plus 5r. And that is the same as choice C. This is the SAT MathWiz Tutoring Service, and I hope you enjoyed our lesson on functions, on plugging in x and y values and setting up functions. I can tutor you online. All you need is a computer with an internet connection. You don't need any kind of fancy equipment. The first session is free, and I would be glad to give you a chance to find out what online tutoring with the SAT MathWiz Tutoring Service is like and how it can help you. Thanks for your time and watching this video.